Welcome to BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT. We're having a live debate today on the subject of the IT team of the future. The BCS has recently been undertaking a campaign on the next wave of IT. Uh, things like augmented reality, uh, cognitive computing, 3D printing. And when we take those things in line with a lot of other uh, burgeoning technologies, we can see that there's going to be a lot of impacts on the IT team. For example, the use of the cloud for various purposes, the mobile workforce, uh, app-driven mobile devices that they use, offshoring, onshoring, uh, reshoring, uh, the list is quite long. This will cause a change in IT professionals in the way that they work and the skills that they require. Uh, so to discuss this today and what IT professionals and digital leaders need to know, we have an expert panel uh, that I'd like to introduce to you now, starting with Keith Lucas from Foster Wheeler Energy. Welcome, Hello. Keith. We have Edward Walton uh, from Templar Associates. Uh, welcome, Edward. And we have uh, Adam Philthorpe, who's uh, from BCS, our Director of Professionalism. Thank so uh, what we'd like to open up here with gentlemen is what are the general impacts of some of those things that I just mentioned there in the introduction on the IT department? Can we start with you, Keith? I guess the, the biggest direct impact for, for us is, is the cloud um, and the diversity of services that are offered on the cloud that can help us. Um, that undoubtedly is going to change the landscape of our internal IT department. Um, I think it varies from company to company, though, enormously dependent on the scale uh, of the organisation. And, and as you can imagine, for a small organisation, the cloud is a very good way of getting high quality skills uh, and expertise without the need for a massive IT department. Whereas conversely, for a large organisation, actually, the, the organisation might wish to preserve some of its own uh, internal skill sets and therefore use less of the cloud. Uh, because it doesn't get the scale economist on it. Okay. And now, one thing I should have mentioned in my introduction, I'll just go back to uh, my, my direct camera here, is that if you want to get involved in this debate, there's a hashtag that you can tweet on. Uh, it's hash, hashtag future IT team. Uh, we've already had some questions via that. Are we trying to put them into the panel uh, as we go? Uh, perhaps we could uh, move on to you, Edward. What, what do you consider the current skills gaps uh, to be? I think it's the... Uh People take a lot for granted some of the softer skills that anybody in IT should have that frequently, as we know from, from ancient history through to, to the modern era of IT, uh, a lot of people in our industry just simply do not have or don't have at a mature enough level. I think the issue of professionalism is one that should encounter and encompass uh, all areas of, uh, of some of these soft skills. Uh, for example, there's been a recent uh, piece of work undertaken uh, by an industry body I, uh, I work with, uh, and the top nine out of the top 10 skills, so one through nine, were soft skills required by employers requiring of, of graduate employees from the IT courses they were recruiting from. Mm. So they're not looking for pure technologists, they're looking for technologists with a rounded skills base. Yeah. What's, what's your perception of that, Adam, as you go around? Um, so I think, I think IT is, is, is hugely disruptive, not just on the enterprises and the skill set that's going to be required, but the way we work. So I think IT teams of the future may, they won't be located in the same office. They might not have a nine to five, why waste a huge amount of time commuting to an office that you don't need to be sat in. Um, I think the skills that are going to be developed are going to take into account that you've got to be able to understand the nature of the organisation, what it's trying to achieve, and deploy your skill set to be able to achieve that end. So you've got to understand what the risk profile is of that organisation. Because it might be that you can't work off in your own location. You've got to, to be on site for other reasons. Mm. Um, they would be more qualified than me to talk about some of those. But I think it's going to be really disruptive as to what teams, what workplaces look like in the future. Um, and the skill set is going to be one of um, collaboration. It's going to be one of working with third parties. It's going to be one of... Um, a different relationship, if you like, with suppliers. So, yeah, we need skills to be able to understand how to get value out of all those different relationships. And for me, that's the key. I think people are going to be judged on what value do they bring to the organisation. And that's, not, that's slightly different, I think, to just pure productivity. And it's certainly very different to just being seen to be sat somewhere. Um, and therefore, the nature of work that you might get involved in, the nature of employment that you might have within an IT team might look different. Mm. You might have a skill set that people draw down against. We need that particular skill set at the moment. We might not need it in the future. You might have a portfolio of contracts where you offer a particular skill set. So I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be radically different to where to where we have been in the in in the recent past as to what a team is going to look like in the future, and therefore what skills they're going to have to display. Well, we've already touched. 
almost immediately on the soft skills element, which is an ongoing discussion in IT, isn't it, between those with a deep skill set, which perhaps is viewed as being a little bit geeky, and those that can communicate. I was reading an article just today in Computer Weekly that used this phrase, IT business linguists. Uh, in other words, that function of communicating IT problems to, mm -hmm. to the business and, and business people speaking to IT people. Uh, is there a lot more of that soft skills going to be required in the new look IT team? Yeah. To, to, to me, that's the, that's the key to success of IT. The, the, the technical skills are what they are, and their technical skills are very narrow, uh, but they're ever-changing. Um, but the, the interpretation of those into business tools and, and business success, which is the more important thing, is really key and that's where we as an IT industry need to be sharpening up. You know, we used to have, or we still do have, business analysts, but there's something a little bit more than that. And as you say, this sort of linguist idea, IT and linguist idea mm -hmm. is a is a new title and something which I think we should probably explore to a greater extent because there's no doubt about it that, you know, the, the tech of uh, failed projects on IT uh, and, you know, offshoring, being back to onshoring and cloud, no cloud, all of these things are all about interpretation of business needs yeah. and making a success of it. And, and unfortunately, that's one thing which we're, we're not good at. We're good at selling the hype but we're not good at delivering to what the business needs. Mm. I think to, to add to what Keith said in terms of that decision point over various deep skills and deep uh, requirements, mm. one of the things that, that I found over the years is, is a definite move towards getting people into boardrooms who speak the language of the boardroom. Right. And frequently that ostracises members of the IT community because they don't have, coming back to what I said earlier, what Adam mm. uh, corroborated around the soft skill set, being able to translate from one to the other this business IT linguist uh, title, so to speak. I would argue it's not a, it might be a new title, but it's certainly not a new requirement. Yes. Uh, and I yeah. think that the challenge for a lot of people in the IT profession is that IT has become so commoditized now in terms of a service or even as a product uh, that actually it's no longer the be all and the end all of why that IT project, inverted commas, exists. IT is often there as a, uh, uh, as a delivery mechanism to get X business outcome delivered rather than, oh, we must have this shiny new piece of kit because it's the latest thing on the cover of Stuff magazine. <coughs> so, so there's a lot to be said to, 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 to emphasise this point, that every technologist, every IT person, whatever team position they have around the globe, and come back to the point mm. you were making earlier, Adam, needs to be comfortable, as comfortable with the, with the IT people, I take a word out of your, your words there, Brian, about the IT geek community, mm. which I think is slightly unfair, but, but that's, uh, we go, go by, by the monikers of the past, through to being able to deliver in coherent English or a, another language uh, to, to the boardroom. Now, is it, uh, okay, so we've had a, a question tweeted in here from somebody going by the, uh, the handle IT Addict. Um, we hear a lot about the emerging role of digital leader. How does the digital leader differ from the CIO? I just wonder if that relates to getting messages up to the board. Yeah. Anyone got thought on that? Yeah, so I think, um, I, I, I think that the fact that there's been a, a growth in sort of digital leadership may well point to a failure within I, the IT community to be able to to, to layer that, that communication piece. Mm. I don't think we've been able to fully, or certainly converse in terms that the business understands with regards to what are the benefits, what are the outcomes that we're looking for. I think a little bit of that is down to the duality of IT. So either you are good at delivering, enabling someone else's strategy, okay, sort of keeping the lights on type stuff, or you're actually engaged in changing strategy, changing business models, working out how the organisation is going to grow in the future. And for me, that's absolutely key. I think, a, I think eventually CIOs and digital leaders will converge or when it's a bit more mature, but it's more mature than it is now currently. In some places, that's okay, that can happen, but in others, they're, they're lagging quite a long way behind. And I think that's down to the duality. I think it's making that transition from, oh, we'll keep the lights on and uh, sort of enable someone else's strategy through to changing it. And I think sometimes that's, that's what's going to be, again, different in the future is that in the past, I think the only way to get to the top seat, and I'm not suggesting everyone comes into the into a new organisation and plots a route to chief executive. I mean, maybe some do, I don't know. But that, but that's quite a that's quite a long term game. But I think in the past we used to say to get there, more often than not, finance is probably the way that you were going to go. But I think yeah. I don't think that's true. I think technology is going to drive change in organisations and open up new markets. You've seen disruption in markets that are really, really mature, you know, like Visa and MasterCard, essentially sort of 50 to 50% market split, and then PayPal happens, and then PayPal gets disrupted. So I think new technologies are going to drive paradigm shifts in, in, paradigm shifts in, in new sectors, and different sectors. And if you're in front of the technology curve, opportunity, and if you're behind the technology curve, threat. Mm. And, and that's transformative across anything. You know, if you're in marketing, 
why imagine what your customers might be thinking when you can just ask them and get and get get information Absolutely. back yeah. in real time? You can test the product, try it out, see if it works. You can build stuff, break stuff really quite quickly if you get all that stuff right. So I think the digital leadership is almost a response perhaps in some areas where we haven't been communicating well enough actually. What what is the benefit? Not I can do this and if I change these variables this happens. But mm. what is the organization trying to achieve? And what can I do to again at the point at the top to add value to that to that goal? Okay. And that's what great IT is about, I think. Mm. So Ed, but you were talking yeah. about viewing the CIO as a, as an outward looking role. Indeed. Indeed, I, I think that there's been a, a misconception over the past maybe even 10 years, as long as that, that every CIO sits at board level. And if you look at the FTSE 100, FTSE 250, even amongst large government departments, oftentimes the CIO is not at the board, uh, and not even one rung below the board. The CIO mm -hmm. often report, reports into the CFO, back to mm -hmm. your finance point, or to the chief operations, or, 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 or a another, sometimes even to the chief executive. Uh, and that's not denigrating the role of the CIO. It's the point that a lot of organisations believe the CIO to have a functionality role around delivering uh, the desktop client to, to the organisation, making sure the mail server works, et cetera, et cetera. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever, and that's a very important, very valuable role, mm. but it isn't a board-level responsibility. And this point on digital leadership, that absolutely is a board-level responsibility. And every chief executive or permanent secretary in government or uh, similar uh, accounting officer-type role, no matter what the sector of, of, of industry or, or government mm. or third sector is, uh, is to, to, to recognise that that digital leadership piece is recognising the workplace has changed dramatically in the last yeah. half century. And now you cannot get ahead as a modern company company or modern organization unless you fully embrace technology, unless you fully embrace the change that that brings to the workplace. Mm. And because so that, that's how your customers want to talk to you. It, exactly, exactly. So, so. You, 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 you have a, an iPad there in front of you or you're, you've got Twitter running there. There are many organizations for whom that would be a complete anathema. Mm. The idea of having Twitter actually shape a conversation being broadcast live and, and so on, uh, when you have no idea what's going to, to, to appear in front of you. Uh, for some of the organizations that I work with, uh, even having Twitter in the workplace is an anathema. Mm let alone having it uh, uh, as on the, uh, on the cusp of, of things as you have there. Well, that, that brings up the question of, of what you want in your organisation and what projects you, you should be pursuing in the IT space. Now, we were talking beforehand, Keith, about your Computer Needs Committee. I think this might be a time just to talk about that a little bit. Can you just tell us a little bit yeah, about we, that? Yeah, a few years ago in, in my company, we, we actually got each of the main leaders in the business to sit around a table and debate uh, and, and effectively vote on which projects they thought were the most value to the business. Mm. Um, and that takes away this thing of the guy who shouts the ladders always gets his projects done, or if you report them to the CFO, then you're always going to get the CFO's pet projects mm -hmm. uh, done. So it gets a much bigger balance, a better balance to the organisation yeah. to see which everybody agrees are the biggest bang for your bucks as an organisation, because most organisations are cash-strapped, and, and they're never generally ideas... Uh, Short, short of ideas to, to push forward. So it's all about prioritising those and putting your, your bang where your, your biggest, uh, you put your buck where your biggest bang is. Yes. And, and on that, I talk, listen to, to Adam there about the, the, the CIO role. I think that you know we, we in the IT industry spend a lot of time talking about CIO, should it be board level, should it be this? In reality, in business, they should be where, where they're recognised as being needed. Um, and if it is the guy that's just keeping the service running, then actually that's not a board level position. But if it's someone who is... A, a key, you know, the, the key point of that business to make it happen, like uh, some, you know, maybe the BBC where you live digitally now, then of course that person has to be at the board level. So it's horses for courses, really, I think. And, and but, but to try to shoehorn it as an industry yeah. into one mm. place, it must be here all the time. And actually, I don't believe that's correct. Mm. But I want to come back to the point you just made, Alan, with your point on, on leadership. Uh, out of the FTSE 100, as far as I'm aware, and I'm happy to stand correct on this, the only CIO who's actually made it to the top of a significant large global company is, of course, uh, Phil Clark at uh, Tesco. Uh, and he had as many, had many other roles with Tesco over the years. And his predecessor, Cesare, came from, from a finance uh, and a, 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 a literally a shelf stacking background, mm. how, how, how he started his, his, his work. The point being that it doesn't matter whether you go through and you have aspirations for the top job, whether you come through technology or not. You cannot do it nowadays, even if you're a financial whiz if you don't know how to use Excel, if you don't know how to use uh, IT to, to make it a, a true homogenous part of the organisation. Mm. Those, those are tools to help you achieve that. 
But I still think when you get to that level, you've got to understand how technology is going to transform your business. Absolutely. So with club card and data mining, that was an important facet Indeed, of making part. it making it the company that it is today. So I think there's, and that's going back to the duality. You've got some bits, these, these are tools that are going to enable you to do your stuff, or this is, we're going to transform our business because I can see that we are reward limited. We, you know, we're not going to exist very mm. much longer unless we embrace technology because we don't understand how we talk with our clients. We don't know how we can get talent into our organisation because it's not a workplace environment that, that the best talent and the brightest talent wants to come and participate in because it, it feels too old fashioned. Well, here we go. Um, we've had a, a question about this uh, IT business linguist uh, thought. Will there be a need for IT business linguists tech capability transfers directly to business people who are tech savvy, of which there are going to be more and more. Yeah. What's our feeling there? Well, I wonder if that's happened. So we can see that we know that the anecdotally that you know people say, well the CIO budget is actually decreasing, do ten percent more with ten percent less. But that doesn't actually stack up because it seems like organizations in the whole are actually spending more on technology than ever before. So that means the CIO must at some point lost control of all the all the IT spend. Some of that is okay, depending on how your organisation is set up. But there are people going out and procuring, buying services and technologies that they need, having them delivered in a different way, maybe circumnavigating those that would be in in charge or at least responsible for the integration and security of those systems, and that leads to problems further down the line. So I think I, I think t people understand they need to spend money on technology to both enable and change change course. But not all of that is, is coming through a singular point. And again, that might be down to the leadership on the board. Maybe that's not fully understood and comprehended as to how that could be integrated, how actually you could actually get a much better return on that total capital investment because someone would be able to have a broader, more holistic understanding of how these things can fit together and what other, how you might leverage that technology across the business rather than just it being done in isolation in one small department. Mm. That's a really interesting point actually because benefits harvesting is the key yeah. to it all, isn't it? And, and I think the, the problem with a lot of companies today is that actually there's the IT budget and then there's the rest of the business. Mm. And yes, you may have to spend a little bit more by expanding the IT budget, but you should be reaping those rewards in saving in other areas. Mm. There's in today's world, very few instances where you shouldn't be doing using some technology to improve your business. You, there's not much you should be doing just to add cost. Really, mm -hmm. that's not a good business model. So, so but getting those those monies back out of the other departments is always quite challenging in, in large organisations because everybody protects their budget and fights off. And if if they can save a little bit, that means they can use it in some other area to, to do some of their own developments or yeah. some of their own improvements type of it, uh, approach. Yeah. Yes, I think that there's an important part to play, and I'm very happy to take the contentious uh, ticket here. To say there should be no IT budget. Uh, the number of times I've been involved in delivering large programs, and it said it's not a technology project, Edward. It's merely business change enabled by technology, and that was the watchword, the phrase yeah. of, of everyone five, ten years ago. Uh, and yes, of course, there's going to be pure technology in every organisation. Pure technology budget, I mean, for some of the basic infrastructure that the organisation relies upon to work. Mm. But my argument is, is where there are projects being delivered for the organisation for the benefit of customers or for uh, delivering something else, that shouldn't actually be uh, called IT. As I say, it could be called business change, it could be called anything else. Yes. But it's merely that technology is such an important facet of every single business change program of every single delivery of whatever shape or form you are, whether you're customer facing as an organization, business to business, whatever, uh, that it's it's kind of, it, it's misdirection to call it an IT budget mm. when actually it is just the business. I think we call it business technology in our organization, so we're sort of halfway there. <laughs> we're getting, getting there, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but that's, but that's, that's really key because I, I struggle to think of any organization that I wouldn't consider to be a technology enterprise exactly. in some way, shape or form. Yes. But a lot of people still think they are. They think, well, no, we're a retail organisation and therefore separate mm -hmm. from a technology business or we're a payment set of financial services or all the rest of it. But actually, I perceive those organisations in pretty much every sector to be a technology enterprise. Mm. I can think of a guy who makes um, bespoke furniture down where I live, but of course, 90% of his business is done through the web. Yeah. So, it, it, so he's got an e-commerce engine that drives business of his organisation, even though it is an old handcrafted um, yeah. product. But I, can't, I, fail, I struggle to think of anything that isn't technology, isn't a technology business, even public sector. Yes. You know, governmentless platform, some of the stuff that's happening with GDS and, and right across the board, actually, in public sector, that's about putting the citizen in charge. And how far yeah. does that go? Do you go all the way with data? And, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of 
really interesting ideas around that. But you know, technology government as platform is is as time has come, I think, or it's oh, I personally I'm probably a little bit out of date, but I think this is something that we're actually living through at the moment. I think yeah. it's got incredible consequences. I think Citizen Smith here is right on the button with uh, <laughs> <laughs> putting the citizen in control. <laughs>